Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good day, listener, and welcome to this Salah special edition of Global Arena on Vision 92.5 FM Kano. I'm your host, Umar Isa Nandabo. And I'm right here, right now, joined on the line with my guest via a video messaging application called Zoom. Ramadan Karim in arrears and happy Salah to all Muslims around the world. Well, it is undeniably and undoubtedly clear that during Salah celebrations, we have fun, enjoy ourselves, and make others happy. So in line with this, Global Arena has decided not to talk about war, famine, or even the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but today's episode is going to talk about and focus solely on some of the factors and forces that influence filmmaking and film production around the world. Secondly, we will also take a microscopic look at some of the roles played by uh, the American giant called Hollywood in filmmaking and the allegations labeled against it uh, for quote unquote imperialism and penetrating other film industries. Um, well, I believe our followers and listeners are keenly and enthusiastically waiting to hear the name of my guest. He is Professor Abdullah Uba Adamu, currently the Vice Chancellor of National Open University of Nigeria, based in Abuja. Uh, he has uh, is also a researcher uh, in the field of media and culture. He was a professor, first of all, in the field of science, uh, education, and later metamorphosed and transformed into a professor of media and culture. So he is one of the few people to have uh, the opportunity of having or holding a dual professorship. And he joins me on the line via Zoom, as I said earlier on, from the capital of Nigeria, Abuja. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Abdullah Uba Adamu, for joining uh, Global Arena. Happy Salah to you. Well, the same to you. Thank you for inviting me. It's really an honor to host you on Global Arena because well, we have been um, um, waiting for this moment to talk to you about something on this very, very interesting program, which I'm going to ask you uh, about later to rate the program and the performance of the presenter. Thank you so much. Let me dive deeply into the cracks of the discussion without further ado, because there's a lot of things to discuss. Um, first of all, at the age of 64, I suppose, and I believe, um, you still have passion for music and movies. Why the passion? Well, why, where did it say that because you are a particular age, you cannot enjoy yourself? If you look at the fans mm -hmm. in any football arena, when they zoom on the fans, you see people who are much older than me going to a football game to watch a football game because they like mm -hmm. it. So I like, yes. apart from that, I like music, I like uh, novels, I like performance, uh, I like watching films and things like that. It is what makes me happy. Everybody has something that makes them happy. Music is what makes me happy since I was a child. So it's not a question of age, it's a question of what makes you happy. There are people who sit down and read the Quran, that makes them happy, that's very good. I wish I could do that, but I don't, uh, regrettably. But what I do, I do read the Quran when I can. Yeah. But as far as my mental cerebral process is concerned, um, music is, is, is it. Mm. I, I'm almost a musician because I, I have two guitars uh, and a piano. Okay. And my, my daughter has two violins. Mm. Uh, we have, a, um, uh, we are looking now for drums. You know, so we, we have musical <laughs> in, in the house. Awesome. Yeah. All right, that's very good. Um, but I don't know whether you can sing or whether you can... I, because I know you are particularly interested in rap music. Maybe towards the end of the program, I will give you a chance to do a rap music or a, a, what they call freestyle. What, yeah, what they okay. call freestyle. No problem. Fine. That is what we can do. All right. All right. Now to the crux of the discussion. What can you, Professor, say about the development in the film, uh, I mean, in the field of uh, filmmaking and film production in the world, and let's narrow it down to Nigerian context. Well, the development in uh, cinematographic technology has taken the whole world by storm. There was a time mm. when we were using 16 millimeter cameras, and then we moved up to 35 millimeter cameras. These were cameras that use what is called film stock, and each film mm. stock is in a reel, and you have to take that reel and develop it, and normally you develop it in England and it costs a lot of money to develop it and so on. 
And it's actually that reel that uh, caused fire at El Dunia and sometimes around 1953, which led to the death of many people because uh, the whole cinema caught fire. But now mm -hmm. the technology is such that virtually everything is recorded on a digital media. Uh, you have a small flash, I mean, you have a small uh, SD card, which is about 64 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte, and it can record hours and hours of uh, film. And when it fills up, you just simply transfer it to your uh, editing device, like a laptop, and then continue again. So there has been a tremendous development in cinematographic uh, technology over the years, and that is very good. Not only has it been more sophisticated, but it also become cheaper because people can afford to buy it now far much more than before. Uh, the cameras that were they were using, for instance, in in, in Nigeria, where Panasonic. Uh, shoulder cameras, those huge yes. Panasonic camera, shoulder cameras. Um, yes. And they can only record on a VHS tape. But now you're using Canon cameras and they have a small tripod and you can take the cameras all over the place. You can put it in your pocket. So it makes it easier to carry. Uh, it's, it's, it's more advanced. The pictures are clearer and you get 1920 HD resolution. And all these are, are developments in the cinematographic technology that makes filmmaking much, much, much easier. And even the phones that we use nowadays, their resolution is much higher than the resolution of the cameras that we were using uh, about 20 years ago. So you can even make a film with your own camera. It's just, it's not a question of the, it's actually the camera itself, but your storyline yeah. uh, and, yes. and the actors and how you arrange everything, the way you have your storyboard yes. and then how you assemble everything. But even your phone can, 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 can become a very powerful cinematographic a camera. So yes, there has been a lot of development, cheaper. Technology is now commodified. Mm. It's a commodity. The phone is a commodity. Yeah. We yes. can't afford to be without it. So most of the phones now have a camera. The cameras have high, uh, high definition, and therefore you can do actually mm. a high definition recording uh, of, of, of a film. If you want. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. You, you, you've just been talking about the technological aspect of film development uh, without talking about the issue of storyline, cultural representation and other things and other stuff related to that. Um, what can you say about this issue? Well, every film reflects culture. What is culture? Hmm. Culture is the way people live their lives. And films okay. are attempts to reflect the way people live their lives. Hmm. Uh, you could capture what is called the human condition in a film that does not necessarily reflect cultural values, like uh, violent okay. Hollywood movies, Arnold Schwarzenegger, John Wick, and mm. all those films, uh, they, they don't mm. really reflect real life. But at the same time, they are entertaining. Mm. They give you two hours of yes. solid entertainment. Um, but you can, they also reflect what yes. is called the human condition. That is, somebody is caught up in a particular situation. Mm. What does he do? How does he solve the problem? How does he use his skills in order to get out mm. of that particular situation? Let's take Arnold Schwarzenegger, for instance, mm. Commando. It's about mm. uh, a group of people who wanted uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger character to do something bad, mm. which he felt was morally and ethically wrong. So he said he yes. wouldn't do it. So they kidnapped his daughter. And he went all out in order to retrieve his daughter back. He didn't do what they wanted him to do, but he got yes. his daughter back. And that, that is a, an example of human condition. It shows you mm. that, yes, there is violence. There's a lot of shooting, mm. unrealistic shooting. Because hundreds <laughs> yes. of people were shooting at him and nobody was, was hitting him. But he retrieved his daughter. Yes. The same thing with the Die Hard film. Yeah. Uh, somebody found mm. himself in the wrong place at, at the wrong time, and he has to escape. Mm. He, has to, he has to find yes. a way of, of saving his life. So those are mm -hmm. films that yeah. reflect human condition. They don't reflect culture, yes. but unfortunately here when we talk about culture, we tend to think in terms of village, we think in terms of uh, wearing yes. uh, uh, palace costumes and, and things like that. That's not culture. Mm. Culture is what happens every day. So what's the real culture of Hausa people? The real culture of Hausa people? What's the what? real culture? The culture is what they do every day. What they eat, so the that's the culture. they wear, that's the culture. Culture means the way of life of people. And it changes, it's dynamic. Okay, when we were children, we used to eat in a wooden bowl. But now we eat in plates, plates that are made in China or Czechoslovakia or wherever it is. But nevertheless, we still remain our, our identity. We remain Hausa or Pulani or uh, Kanuri or whatever it is. 
you, so your culture is the way you live your life, is your identity. That is what defines culture. Your, your identity, not, not, not uh, some artifact uh, that you see. For instance, in the whole of Kano, I, I have not seen any house that reflects a, a, a typical house or house. All the houses in Kano tend to be uh, European design and things like that, all of them. They don't reflect house or houses. But that does not mean that houses are not living there. Okay, house people are living in those houses. So culture is about yes. identity. It's about who we are and how we preserve that identity, not about the material culture that we use. Are you saying that some, some of the filmmakers and film producers here in Northern Nigeria misunderstand the culture and that is why they, in your own words, are able? Is that so? It is very likely that their, their own perception of culture yeah. is, is different from what the textbook says about culture. Um, but yes. in Northern Nigeria, the films that are made are not reflect, they could, if you like, they can reflect culture of marriage. That is, marriage yes. is one institution in which there are a lot of a whole other varieties that reflect culture. Mm -hmm. The food we eat, yes. the clothes we wear, how we bury our dead, how we name our children. Uh, the, uh, these are all part of cultural patterns. But yes. it is very likely that in their own understanding of culture, they tend to pick up only marriage issues. So that is why all their films are about romance, but they don't cover other aspects of culture. But even then, when they look at romance, uh, romantic culture, they are not basing it on a typical house of romantic culture. I remember, for instance, many of us, when we were about to get married uh, 30, 35 years ago, our prospective wives don't even look at us in our eyes. They're very shy. But now you see everybody dancing up yeah. and down all over the place. And so you say they are, not, they are not basing it upon the real romantic um, uh, culture of house of people. What are they basing it upon? Indian. They watch Indian films and they copy Indian films and they say they have no apologies for doing that. So all the thinking okay. and dancing is based on Indian films. And they said themselves that they will yes. continue to copy Indian films and they have no apologies for copying Indian films. And the reason they have no apologies for uh, not so, uh, 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 the, what, what, for the reason they have for not mm. uh, copying Indian films, I mean, for, they, for mm. not abandoning no. Indian films, mm. is simply because yes. they said they don't have the skill to make their own films. Some of them actually confessed that they, they don't have the skills to create a film. So what they do is they watch an Indian film and then they copy that Indian film. This is, this is, is it not? Is it not an allegation or well, you have a proof that they have oh, confessed, there is. really? There, there is. There many news, in the many newspapers and magazines, there were a lot of magazines that were devoted to mm. filmmakers. Uh, all of them are, of course, uh, extinct by now. Uh, there are about mm. over 11 or 12 of them, and I have all of them. I have, we have interviews mm. um, that, that, that they, have, they have given in which they said that they cannot make a film that will not sell because what will sell is singing and dancing. And moreover, when they make a film that is cultural, it doesn't sell. So they are, they are incapable of making films that are, are cultural. So it's not an allegation. I, I, okay. ask, I, I dare you, ask any filmmaker in Kano, ask mm. any filmmaker why he copies mm. Indian films, and he will tell you the truth. If he really wants to tell you the truth, that the reason why they, they copy Indian films is because they themselves have claimed in newspapers and magazines that they don't have the skills to create a story that will sell. And another in, uh, interesting issue um, about this is that the, the, the viewers uh, of, the, uh, of those movies produced here in Kano, in the northern part of Nigeria, prefer such uh, movies. And it's like movies are, and films are produced uh, for some s specific target audiences. Don't you think they also have also uh, another uh, reasonable um, claim, I mean, backing? Fine. Because I they are no, doing I, it for the no, people, and this is what the people like. I have no problem with that. Just don't call it culture. If you want to make money, fine, make money. Okay, th but that's don't, your don't problem. Call your it obsession yeah. is about culture. My obsession is about cultural representation. I mean, I can't take your film to Canada and say this is how it's a culture. Let me give you an example. One of our colleagues was teaching at the University of Warsaw in Poland, and he, he, he was teaching how to language. Yes. And he wanted to show house of film and he showed house of film 
And the student told him, no, this is not yes. Hausa people because uh, we know how Hausa people are from geography books. And these guys that are thinking and dancing and rolling on a lawn, on the grass, are, are not real. The same thing with another person who was in the university in Tehran, in Iran. Mm -hmm. to ask, Iran, yes. Asking us to tell him which films are, are, are cultural. Because when he tried to show the films that were available to him at that time to his students, they rejected them. They said they even know the Indian films that these films were taken from. Because Iran, mm -hmm. Iranians also watch Indian films. They said they want to see house of films. So we have a lot of evidence uh, that shows that people, people don't, uh, don't see this as cultural representation. But I don't have any qualms whatsoever to the money they are making. Many of them are multimillionaires by now. When they started, they were dead poor. But now they are rich, <laughs> super rich, with mansions, with cars, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and I don't begrudge them that. I think it's fantastic. They made a lot of money but they should not say that they are representing culture. That's my, my worry. You are not representing me. You are not representing my culture by singing. All right, I've interviewed a couple of Kanye uh, actors, and one of them was like saying that uh, in reply, in reaction to some of your criticisms was even saying that um, people like you have been, who are experts in the field of media and culture, uh, and have been criticizing them. Why haven't you joined uh, sitting maybe uh, not outside outside the circle penetrating the circle why are you out of them do you like football no you know, i like used to football. be a fan of football a couple of years back but right now i'm not interested okay. so let's look at the time when you are a fan of football okay there are yes. two, there are two states of being you can either be a player or a watcher yes now, when they are showing football league on TV, you see thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of spectators. Yes. Why don't you ask all those spectators to become footballers? All right. Because they can't. Precisely. Just because you, 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 you criticize something doesn't mean that you have to be inside it. That's number one. Number two, okay. I teach film studies. I teach film okay. production in Bayern University. And I teach my students how to make a film. And as a vice chancellor in National Open University of Nigeria, I am the only vice chancellor who has a full plate film program called Film Production. We have it. So ours is, is, is not, my criticism is not an empty criticism. I'm in the circle right. because I have a film company. I have videos that I have shot. I have film that I have made. But mine are not commercial. They are cultural. They are anthropological. They are ethnographic. They are made for research. They are made, they are made purposely for research. For research. That's right. I, I don't make my films in order to make money. But their right. criticism is that, why don't you join us? Why should I join you? I'm not interested in joining you. Who says that for me to be, to be rich, I have to start running, jumping up and down on copying other people? But we have a program in National Open University of Nigeria called Film Production. And it's for okay. those who want to become filmmakers. And I taught film production on film uh, making in Bayer University for many years. And we have encouraged our students to make films. We made three films. Our students made three films before I became a vice chancellor. So I'm right inside it. No other critic has ever created a, a, a film production uh, 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 curriculum like I did. I created it and we are implementing it. These things that you have mentioned, you've been mentioning, do you think they are enough? Can we call those contributions enough? Like, Well, I don't want to reveal secrets, but I have given my own money to some, some filmmakers to make their own films, and I didn't get my money back. Uh, did you give them in order I to- I gave them, I gave them, I, I gave them, they, they, of course, I, it's a loan, but they never gave me, they, they never gave it back to me. All right, let's move on. Um, this argument will never end uh, because it's an endless debate. Uh, but there is uh, another issue that I want to ask you. Let's like uh, move out of the country and talk about the whole world. Let's talk about Hollywood. Um, some people are accusing Hollywood of quote unquote being uh, imperialistic by penetrating other film industries and thereby suppressing them. Can you tell me any Hollywood film you watch? The last Hollywood film you watch? Can you tell me the name? 
The blacklist. Okay. The blacklist is made by in Hollywood, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a TV series. Okay. Um, of James Spader. Fine, 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 whatever. The fact is, who forced you to watch it? Nobody. Good. Then there you are. You have answered your question. The whole issue of imperialism is a question of nobody forced you to watch it. You decided to watch it yourself. You went and bought it yourself with your own money. And you put it on your own TV. Huh? Americans didn't come and say, watch our films. So you cannot claim, you cannot blame them for imperialism. If you decide you want to watch their films and then copy what is in their films, you have what is called agency. That is your willingness huh? to accept or to reject. You decided to accept. Huh? So it is your fault. So that is why it is called imperialism from below, not from above. Now they have a cinema house in uh, in, in uh, Adobayero shopping mall. Okay. And you go there yes, and it's you one watch of the, you... Good. You go there and you watch an American film. It, nobody forces you to go. Nobody forces you to pay. You decide to go on your own. You can decide you will never watch any American film and nothing will happen to you. And yet a lot of people watch American film and then they claim yeah. that America is taking over. Don't watch them. The... Don't buy them. Hollywood will make films and they will sell film to the, anybody who wants to buy it. And they sell film to the world. Now, you can decide yeah, not to buy the films. You can say, I will not buy someone it. I will wrote not it. Mm. Someone wrote it that um, the reason why Hollywood is what it is, as great as it is, is its ability uh, not just to write a good story and make a good film, but to convince you that the movies are for you. You well, also share this view, I suppose. Forget about whether they, they have good films, whether they have good stories, or whether the movies are for you or not. Forget about all that. Look at the fact right. that Hollywood has produced something. And you feel that this thing is injurious to a culture. You call it imperialism. Fine. Be unimperial. Don't watch it. Simple. Because they, they didn't come with guns and ask is you to watch it, did they? I mean, nobody put a gun on no. your head and say you must watch this or you must buy it. Nobody. You voluntarily yes. bought it. Yes. So that means that you have an ability to say no. So say no. And then allow those who want to watch, watch. But don't generalize and say this is imperialist. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like cultural imperialism. Because you have the right mm. to say no. You have the right to refuse. Mm. You have the right not to buy. If you don't buy, then you don't buy. They go to another market. But you bought it. You watched it. You like it. You watch it again and again and again. So nobody is making is nobody is colonizing you. You are colonizing yourself because you are watching the same film over and over again. But if you want to watch that film and you want to learn something well, from that film so that you can also become a good filmmaker as they are, that is not imperialism. Because all the books that we learned were written by so other people. You are saying that it's wrong. What is wrong? So you're saying that it's wrong for for people to accuse Hollywood movies of um, destroying the good morality of other people. There's nothing like destruction of morality. There has been a lot of immorality in Nigerian societies long before Hollywood came. And that morality is still, still there. Are you telling me that the prostitution that is going on in Kano at the moment was caused by Hollywood? Are you telling me that the drugs that women take at, at the seat in, in Hollywood films? I mean, you go to Tamburawa, for instance, there are a lot of prostitutes there. Those who are not even educated. Did they become prostitutes because of Hollywood? I mean, a lot of things are happening. What about the kidnapping and armed robbery? Are you telling me that all those uh, Fulani herders who kidnapped people for ransom got it from Hollywood? Or are you telling me that the house of society is so pure, so beautiful, so fantastic that it is Hollywood that has spoiled it? There has always been bad elements in the society. Remember, when God created Adam, and the angels. He asked all the angels to bow down to mm. Adam. And one of the angels refused. He said he will not. And his name was Iblis. And God cast him out of paradise. And because of that, he said he is going to try to lead man astray. So God gave you a choice. Mm. You can either follow the devil or you can follow the Lord. So you have a choice. Nobody is forcing you to watch Hollywood movies. You decide you don't want Hollywood movies because you think they are bad, fine. 
But a lot of the things that are happening in our society have nothing to do with Hollywood movies. They have been happening for a very long time and they will continue to happen for a very long time. Okay. Okay. Um, um, well, what can you say about Bollywood? Because uh, the people there are also accusing Bollywood of being pro-America. Like they are copying American uh, films in many examples. There are so many examples I can give you. Um, yeah, of course, in terms of dressing, first of all, even the storylines sometimes, uh, even the use of language, and there are many other things. What can you say about that? Is Indian or are Indian movies losing the track, derailing from the normal pattern that well, you are established first of, upon? First of all, what is normal? You have to decide what is normal. Okay? What is normal normally means films that are made before the 70s those old films but those old films in the 50s and the 60s were based on american films and they know that they said so type in google riff of indian movie riff of mm -hmm. american hollywood and there are many websites that shows you okay. side by side which indian film was copied from which american film side by side america uh, bollywood filmmakers like Hollywood filmmakers said that they prefer to copy Hollywood because Hollywood is better, has a better story. And there's a book like that published to that effect. I have that book by Tiswani, by Tiswani Geranchi. She published a book on that. She talked to the producers. And the producers told her that they will continue to copy American films because they don't have the skills to copy their own films. Just like our own Kanye Wood said they will continue to copy Indian films because they don't have the skills to, copy, to make their own films. So I, 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 don't, I don't watch Indian films, I hate them, okay? So, I, 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 but if you study them, they are basically fundamentally yes. poor copies, poor photocopies of American films, because they want to be accepted. They want the whole world to see them, and therefore they have to look like American. And how does it affect the, uh, the standard of the Indian film industry? Oh, it doesn't affect it at all. They are, they are super rich, just like our own kind of wood people. Let me tell you the person who destroyed Bollywood. The one person who destroyed the, the, the Bollywood who is industry. Amitabh Bachchan. The super rich guy who is one of the most influential figures in the um, Indian film cinema. That's right. He's the guy who destroyed Indian cinema. But he's being respected, highly respected in the country. That's right. But that does not mean that he didn't do a bad damage. He did a very, very bad, da bad damage to Indian films. Indian films were based on their own right. culture, their religion. He brought all this Americanism inside it. Shole, for instance, is, is not an Indian film. It's, it's made up of so yes. many other uh, films okay. taken from America and so on. Okay, so most of his films are based on America. Okay. He, he created this, uh, the angry young man uh, persona in his films looking like James Dean or something like that. His heroes are American. He destroyed the American, uh, the, the, the Bollywood film industry. He turned it completely towards uh, United States. But the Indians are happy with that. That's okay, good for them. So it's not a problem, I suppose. I, I, I don't care one way or the other. I'm just telling you that as far as research is concerned, he destroyed the Indian film industry. Just like our own Kanye Wood mm. people are destroying it and then they claiming that we who criticize them do not should, should, should invest in that film. Why, why should we? Mm. Just because I, will, I like watching football, I like uh, Ronaldo or Messi or whatever they call them, does not mean that I have to go and play mm. like that. I am a consumer. Mm. And as a consumer, I have every right yes. to a particular standard. Mm. So when you produce something, I go to a restaurant, and let's say you're yes. a restaurant and you are selling food, and I go to a restaurant, and I said, uh, Alaji, this your, 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 your soup today, it has too much salt in it. What, is, what, what are you supposed to tell me? You are supposed to tell me, thank you very much for pointing this out. Tomorrow, we'll try to make sure we'll put a little bit of less salt and we'll test it. But no, yes. not the house of film industry. House of film industry will say, well, mm. why don't you come and cook it yourself? Why did you come here? Come and cook it yourself. That is not how to, 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 to deal with consumer. I'm a consumer and I have, every, I have consumer protection. I have every right to demand a particular standard. And if you are making a film in my language, my language, not any other language, if you are making it in Nufi or in Kanuri, that's your problem, not my problem. Mm. But my problem yes. is that Hausa is my language, and you are using Hausa mm. language.
to make films in my language, and you are claiming that these films represent my culture, and you are misrepresenting my culture in my language. If you want to do that, make it in so English. So you have the right to I talk. have the right. I have the right to object. And you don't have the right to tell me I should make my own film. You don't have that right. Because you didn't even ask for my permission to use my language. You are using my language. You are using my settings. You are using my city. You are using my culture. And you are distorting that culture. And I'm a consumer. And I'm saying you don't have that right. So when I talk, and then you keep, you keep saying, why don't you join us so that you can make better films? I don't have to join you. But I'm a consumer. Not all of us can be producers and consumers. Some are producers, some are consumers. I'm a consumer. And I'm saying that you are not providing me with the goods yes. that I want. And that's why I gave you the example of a restaurant. I go to a restaurant to buy food, and I discover that you put mm, too much yes. salt. And then when I tell you that there's too much salt in this food, instead of you saying, I will correct it, you say, why don't you come and cook it yourself? You get angry. That's exactly the attitude these guys have. Whenever you show them that there is a way to do things, mm. they get angry. They said, why don't you come inside the film industry? So that is why I created BMAS, that is Benchmark Minimum Academic Standards in film production to show people how to make a film. So I'm in it. I'm in it better than they are. Mm. They put money. I put ideas. Yeah. The money will finish. The idea will never finish. All right. Before we are running out of time, before we um, uh, move to the end of the discussion, where does Hollywood get its ideas? Creativity. Absolutely creativity. Very creative. Okay. They sit down mm -hmm. and they look at human conditions so, and then they have a team that sits down and go through a whole series of script writing, uh, story treatment, and then they do a lot and a lot of research. They do research about characters, about houses, and so on. For instance, you don't just put somebody in any house just like that. You have to know the character. If the character is, is a, 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 not a very neat character, you give, him a you give him a house that doesn't look neat. But if the character is an executive, mm. you put him in a house that is executive looking, something that will suit his style. But in our case, that is not the case. We just simply use whatever we can find. My house in Bayer University has been used 12 times for films. Why? It's not because it's a beautiful house. It's just like any other house on the campus. It is because it is free. Sometimes they go to a hotel and then they show a, a, a bedroom with what they call night stands, two lamps on the left and on the right. There is no house a house that has something like that. And when I complain that you are not representing my culture as a consumer, you say, why don't you come and join us? Why would I join you? I'm not a restaurateur, so I cannot make food like you do. You decide to do it. But as far as I'm concerned that I'm a consumer, I consume this and I pay for it. And since I pay for it, I have every right to be given mm -hmm. what I paid for. All right. Uh, finally, before we end the discussion, um, what are your favorite movies? Well, well in, what, in which industry? Because you talk about three film industry. You talk about Hollywood, Bollywood, and the kind of wood. All, right. all of them, all of the three. All of the three. Well, for Hollywood, I prefer action films. Films that are not realistic at all, but yeah. well choreographed. Well put, well, well, mm. well, well, the cinematography is fantastic and uh, mainly science fiction and action films. Bollywood, I don't like Bollywood. I don't watch Indian films. I think they are just silly, they are very stupid, but that's my opinion, okay? And uh, it's very biased opinion. So I don't Can you give that. us one name? Well, Rani Rupmati, for instance, was one film that I, I like, and that was made in 1956. That was the year I was born. So, and I watched it in the cinema when I was a small boy. That's the oh, only film yeah. I watched. I don't watch any other Indian films. As for Kanye Wood, I don't watch Kanye Wood films at all. If I watch a Kanye Wood film, it's because I want to analyze it for one reason or the other. What about Bollywood? Oh, I told you Bollywood. I told yeah. you Bollywood, uh, Rani Rupumati. Uh, that is uh, what they call Hoti Ho. Okay? But it's not okay. Hoti Ho. It is Ho Ji Ho. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. But for Kanye yeah. Wood, I don't, I don't watch okay. Kanye Wood films. But how do people say Ho Ti Ho? Yeah, it is Ho Ji Ho. Not ho T O. Okay. It's J O, not T I. Mm -hmm. And Candy Wood, I don't watch that. I only watch Candy Wood films if I'm going to analyze them. So you're not watching them for pleasure? No way. I don't have that time. Yeah, finally, what can you say about 
the program global arena and the presenter oh the, it's very good very very good and uh, i like the fact that uh, sometimes you ask for verification mm. of uh, information uh whether I, when when somebody says something you want to know whether it is speculative or whether there is a fact i like that it shows uh that you are being trained as a good mass communicator because for whatever you do you have to have a fact you have to have an explanation you have to have a reason you have to have a reference point and i like that so i think you are on to a very very good thing thank you very much indeed uh, professor abdullah uba adamu the vice chancellor national open university of nigeria joining us from the capital of nigeria abuja uh, listeners that has been professor abdullah uba adamu uh, for uh, all uh, all the way from abuja with us on global arena i wish you all the best and i hope when next we invite you you'll be able uh, to to make it uh because we have not finished with the discussion thank you very much sir no problem you are welcome have a nice day bye bye everyone